Today we've got a French single malt whiskey that tastes like a dessert. Hello YouTube, welcome back to Happy Hour. Today I have a fascinating whiskey, if I do say so. Uh, it is Bren, Bren single malt whiskey. This is a French single malt whiskey. I, I've, I've had this bottle for quite a while now, well, four or five months, it's quite a while for me. <laughs> and you can see, oddly enough, I haven't really drank that much. And it's not because I don't like it. Uh, as I will talk about, I do like it. It's because it's just so weird, I don't really know what to do with it, to be completely honest with you. It's so unique, and I say weird, and it, these are all good. These all mean good things, but it's just very odd. It's nothing that I've ever tried before. It's just so different and interesting that I really haven't, uh, I haven't given it enough time to kind of, the first, the first dram or two that I had, I was just so taken aback. I'm like, I don't even understand what I'm drinking right now. <laughs> so it was just like, I kind of put it back in the cupboard and just kind of ruminated on it. And it was like, okay, I gotta let that sink in a little bit. So, but I figured it was time to do a review on it. And hopefully I can kind of maybe get those taste buds back going and, and see where we're at. So this is a French single malt whiskey, like I said. I believe this is matured in French oak cognac casks and then finished in limousine oak, uh, French limousine oak, I believe. I think that's what it was. So the, I, I can only assume that the French limousine oak imparts an incredibly unique flavor to it. Um, but it is, yeah, it's it's really like nothing I've ever tried before. So so that is cool. The cool factor is is high up there because it's just that much different. For a single malt whiskey, it doesn't really taste like anything else out there. So enough yik lack. Let's get some in the cup. Yeah, that's the smell right out of the gate. It's so crazy. So I don't even have to stick my nose in it. I don't know. It's so weird. It smells exact like if you were to give this to me, like if you were just to pour this, pour me a dram of this and shove it over to me. Before I've tried this, obviously, now I know what it is. I could pick it out of a line up, line up a mile away. But if you were to when if you were to give this to me before I tried it, I would there's no way in heck I would even know this was a single malt whiskey. I wouldn't know what it was. I would be probably guessing like maybe a cognac. I'm not really up on my cognac, so I would say this is like a cognac or a Calvados or some other, you know, high strength spirit made from God knows what, but it's absolutely incredibly unique. It smells like creme brulee and I just picked up on it smells like banana runts. That's crazy. I know that sounds crazy, but for all you guys who remember runts, the kind of little hard candies, each of them were shaped like the particular fruit. They had banana runts in there. So this smells like you had a glass of, let's say, Glenlivet 12, and you accidentally dropped a banana runt in it. And then you walked over to the fridge and you took out your leftover creme brulee dessert that you took home from the steakhouse that night, took a big blobby bite of that, then came back to your whiskey and you took a sip. That's what this smells like. I know it's ludicrous, but it's like bananas and creme brulee and caramel and the powdered sugar. It's so sweet. It's like, I almost feel like there should be like, sugar crystals floating around in here. It's it's unbelievable. It really is. And that's just the nose. We haven't even tasted it yet. Tastes exactly like it smells. Tastes like banana runts and creme brulee. It's not that strong. I think it's only 40%. Yeah, it's 40%. So it's very easy to drink. And it's just so odd. I know a lot of the analogies I'm coming up with don't sound that appealing, but and to be honest with you, if you don't like sweeter whiskeys, you will hate this probably because it is very, very sweet. And just those kind of banana and powdered sugar and creme brulee like caramel and kind of baked sugars and wow, it's just it's just very, very unique. It's a dessert whiskey. If I've ever tasted a dessert whiskey my entire life, this is it right here. So cognac casks. The interesting thing is I have, I have a whiskey that I enjoy very much. I haven't done a review on it, unfortunately, yet. Maybe I will, but, or maybe we'll do it right now. But I have this uh, Glenlivet 14, which is a great whiskey, great single malt. And this happens to be also 
finished in Cognac, or at least, does it say finished? Well, it's Cognac cask selection. Probably should have read up on a little bit more, but it's Cognac, it's at least finished in Cognac casks. I think it's finished in Cognac casks. So this being Cognac cask, I think this is aged the whole time in Cognac cask. This is finished in Cognac cask. This is the closest I have uh, for something to compare it to. And I can tell you right now without even doing it, this doesn't taste anything like this. <laughs> but I'm gonna do it anyways, because I ha actually haven't back to back them. So I don't have a glass. I'll be back in a second. Boogie. All right, so I'm gonna pour a little of the Glenlivet 14. Yeah, so it's much darker. So yeah, you can see I've really enjoyed this guy too. Um, I bought this at the same time I, I did the Glenfiddich 14. So two 14 year olds, two Glens. I've just did a review of that as well, um, which I really re enjoyed. And I enjoy this actually probably just as much. Um, it's sweet, it's all get out. It's a definitely kind of a desserty whiskey, but it's, uh, it's, it's very yummy. It's different than the Glenfiddich 14, the bourbon cask. I said it's cognac cask finish, so it's quite a bit different flavoring, but Anyways, let's see what we got. Yeah, so it's not even, it doesn't smell anything like this. Mm. This is really good. I really, I love this Glenlivet 14. It's very sweet again, but I'm getting a little bit of pears. I can get, I can see, again, I'm not a cognac aficionado by any stretch of the imagination, but I can, I think what I'm smelling, I can smell the cognac influence. There is kind of that grapey, um, kind of like green grapes and just that, that sweet kind of white grape, green grape. It's really nice. It smells glorious, but it smells, it smells like a single malt with just this kind of fruity, grapey sweetness attached to it. This, this doesn't smell like whiskey at all. It doesn't smell like whiskey. It smells like creme brulee and friggin' banana runts. All right, I'm gonna taste it again. It's really enjoyable. It's friggin' dessert in a cup. That's really enjoyable too. This just is just a more of a classic, if you're into single malt whiskeys, scotches in particular, this is a much more classic, what you'd expect to get from a single malt whiskey with the twist, right? With the twist being this, this sweet kind of cognac-y essence uh, associated with it. This, I'll give it, I'll, gi I'll give it 100 points right out of the gate for just being something bang out of the gate, totally unique and different. I, I think it can be a bit of a divisive whiskey because Again, if you don't really, if you tend to not like sweeter whiskeys, I think if, even if you don't like sweeter scotches, you could probably enjoy the Glenlivet 14 because it's still mostly scotch, just with a 15% kind of unique twist to it. This is just, to me, is not scotch. It doesn't taste like scotch. Well, it's not scotch. It's Irish, or it's French whiskey. It's single malt whiskey. But there's a uh, very little, there's very little reminiscent of what, a, what I enjoy in a scotch whiskey. So it's different. Again, that's okay. It's just, uh, it's just a totally different ballgame. For interesting factor, I give it 100. As far as a rating goes, so price on this, I think this was $60 by me. Um, it's a little expensive, but hey, it's unique, right? I, you, you, they, they, they're not making thousands and thousands and thousands of bottles of these a day, so I'm sure it's a pretty small operation. Uh, I think that's a fair price, especially for what you're getting, something this interesting and this different. I have no problem spending that money on this and having this in my cupboard for those unique experiences. I almost kind of want to save this just to, to, you know, give to people that come over and be like, hey, you want to try this whiskey? Because you've never tried anything like this before. So yeah, is it kind of a novelty? Maybe for me, I do enjoy it. And I, I will, I'll try to kind of sporadically have a glass here and there because it's just that different. Um, so I would recommend it. I don't know how to rate it. Um, is it kind of a seven out of 10? Is it an eight out of 10 just because it's so unique and special? It's it's hard to rate it. Again, if you don't like sweet whiskeys, just run away from it because it's basically dessert in a cup. But if you do like the sweeter whiskeys and you got 60 bucks to try something different, I would definitely give it a whirl. Like I said, it's it's certainly interesting enough to have in the to have in the, the reserves. So this guy, on the other hand, we might as well rate it while we're here. This is an eight out of 10 for me, maybe even an eight and a half. I think I like this even a hair more than the the Glenfiddich 14 bourbon barrel. 
Um, I do like sweet whiskeys that I'm not shy. I don't shy away from them at all. This is definitely very sweet, but it is a, it's a kind of a classic Glen Livid in the base. So it's interesting. This is about, I think, $52. So uh, it's about the same price as the Glen Fittig 14. I would definitely recommend giving this one a whirl too, if you haven't tried it already. Uh, yeah, so I got two interesting whiskeys. Well, I won't do that on camera, but anyways, if you liked, please click like. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, that would be great too. Thanks for watching Happy Hour and stay tuned. We got, I got tons more whiskeys to review. So come on back. See you later. Cheers.